Howdy folks, Nathan Adlin here with the Fast Lane Car and I am at Mazda Raceway at Laguna Seca. Now Mazda asked us to come out here for a very special reason. They wanted us to check out their new torque vectoring system. Now it's called G Vectoring Control, GVC. And coming up next, we're going to take lots of Mazda products around the track, around cone sections, from five miles per hour all the way up to track speed, and we're going to experience what it's like and what it does for the vehicle. GVC came out of our study of drivers and recognizing that really good drivers will use left foot braking or some sort of weight transfer uh, control to, to sharpen the car's responses and make it more precise and to expand the performance envelope. We figured if we can figure out how to automate what these drivers are doing and make it so anytime you make an input there's the same weight transfer onto the front tires that gives you the same response, we can get a more consistent, sharper, more direct steering response. Very simply, all the system does is when you make a steering input, it reduces the engine torque a tiny amount, which causes a little bit of weight transfer to the front tires and gives you a little bit sharper response. Now as you're driving, you're putting in a certain amount of steering input for every turn you make. This system is supposed to instill confidence to allow you to make that turn smoothly each time you go. It minimizes the amount of steering inputs you have to actually put in in order to make the proper corners. Now, this also works for snow and slippery conditions. It's gonna take time to figure out if the system truly works the way they say it does, especially in winter-like conditions, because as you can tell, in Northern California, there ain't no snow on the ground. Getting this thing to work actually took eight years uh, because there were a lot of sort of dead ends and wrong directions in, in, in making this happen. Um, the first attempts were done with uh, brakes because um, we're modeling after what drivers were doing. Um, but the, the problem with trying to do this with, with brakes, you don't have the as granular control for one, but there's a time lag, there's a minimum response time for brakes that was too long. When you get a signal to the brakes to move some hydraulic fluid through a system and then move some pads up against the rotor, that takes more than the 200 milliseconds, milliseconds that we can notice. And so we couldn't get a natural intuitive response. You can consciously notice 200 milliseconds. You can kind of unconsciously notice something doesn't feel right with a 100 millisecond delay. We've got this down to where the, the, the whole process from steering input to torque reduction is less than 50 milliseconds. It's usually down around the 30 to 40 millisecond range. set to go? Yep, go ahead. So GVC's off. Okay, that last one I felt that the, the difference, I was putting in the steering input, then it went. It was yeah, just yeah. a little bit of a hesitation. A little bit of a delay. Yeah. Right, and then, Interesting. then on the second, when you had to recover it, uh -huh. Notice how much just a little quicker you are because you went in and there's a little delay and by the time I caught up to you we were coming up to the next gate. Now this system was built in conjunction with the company Hitachi. They worked together to build this and what's interesting is that so far not a lot of car companies have come out of the woodwork to ask for it yet. But when I asked Mazda about whether or not this is something they'll share with other car companies, they said, look, a couple years ago, we didn't think we were going to be building Fiats. So it's an interesting possibility for the future. The reason we don't, didn't want to tell you how it worked before you drive it is because what we did when we knew how it worked is we weren't driving around trying to feel that reduction in torque. And you can't because it's, it's as little as 0.001G. It's at absolute most in an aggressive lane change, it's 0.05G. You can't feel 0.05G. So you never feel the deceleration. You only feel the difference in steering response. Um, so knowing how it works is almost a, a penalty. <laughs> so I wanted to have you in there blind. The low transfer, again, in, the, in that most severe uh, scenario um, is 10 pounds on the tire. And most of the time it's a lot less per, tire, per front tire. 
for front tire. 20 pounds. Yeah, and those 10 pounds came off the rear. Um, but that's in an aggressive lane change. What you were doing out here, it's one or two pounds difference. It's a very subtle difference, and you, those, it, it makes a very meaningful difference uh, to the driver. So one of the things I was noticing is that my wrists were, were, were more, you know, I felt like they were buffeting mm -hmm. a lot of the, the car movement. When I was using the system, everything was sort of stable. It was there, or it was there, or it was there. Yeah. So there was a difference. I could feel it, and I saw it with Anto when he was driving, too. It was a little bit... He was much more finesse than me. I'm a lumberjack. I just slap things around, yeah. but it's still... That's where, you know, I could really feel the difference. Yeah, even when you, like, were coming out of the corner, I noticed you were kind of doing these little chops. Uh -huh. And with it on, when you do the chops, it was more like like this yeah with it off it's more like yeah a little bit more severe yeah right. when you're going straight down the road you don't do it with your hands off the wheel you've got to constantly maybe making little corrections to go down the road every one of those corrections is now more accurate and more precise and as a result you do a lot fewer of them now speaking of the future that is the first vehicle you're going to see the system in that is the 2017 Mazda 6. Then after that, the Mazda 3 will have it. Soon, the entire lineup from Mazda will have this new system. Thank you so much for joining me for the Fastlane Car. This is Nathan Adlin. Don't forget to go to tflcar.com for news, views, real-world reviews, and more <laughs> inside baseball tech. Thanks again. Ladies and gentlemen, check it out, the Forbidden Fruit. Yes, indeed, this is a 1989 Nissan, or was it Datsun back then, Skyline GTR R32, the father of the current GTR. And this is actually a Japanese car. It's right-hand drive. And today, well, today we're going to take it and do a Hot or Not episode, give it to the hands of our expert race car driver, Paul. But we ran out of time and we ran out of gas. And this special TFL Now behind-the-scenes episode of TFL's Hot or Not is coming up right now.